So right before we get started with this review, guys, I just want to show you guys one thing about this lens that most of you guys are getting confused. This lens is not a limited edition series lens. This lens is on its own. For one, you guys saw my review, all the limited series have metal lens hood, metal lens cap, aperturing. This lens doesn't have any of it. It has a plastic lens cap, as so. It has a plastic lens hood, and also has no aperturing. So there are really big differences between this lens and the limited series lens. And also this lens costs about $500 and comes with a weather resistant build. So those are some major differences between this lens and the limited series lens. And I know most of you guys are getting that confused because it does look like it aesthetically, but it's totally not uh, the same lens series. So with that said, let's get on with the review. It's getting hot out here. So the first thing I noticed with this lens is you could definitely vibrate the lens and you could actually hear the vibration inside. It's like the lens, the internal lens is going left and right, it's bouncing. And uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you guys, it's up to you, but that's what I'm noticing with this lens. I don't hear this too often with other lenses, but this is the first time actually noticing that because when I got this lens out the box, I thought it was broken inside because it was just moving left and right internally. And so, with that said, the metal build quality is pretty nice. I like the way it looks. Unfortunately, if you look closer to the lens, you can see a lot of dirt spot area. So you could definitely get dirt in the focus ring and the aperture side of things. And it's, uh, it's one of those give and take. You guys should definitely clean your lens after every single use. But I know most of you guys, including myself, I don't really clean my lens after I use it. I just toss it to the side. But that's a very uh, a personal thing. Uh, you could definitely clean it out. It just, it'll definitely attract dirt in, on your lens. So keep that in mind. Even though you have the lens hood on the lens, when you manually focus the lens to zoom in, the lens is actually coming out. Let me show you guys. The lens is actually coming out, but the lens hood does not move with the lens. So that's something you guys should uh, understand when you get this lens because i never seen this design before, but I think it's because of the macro feature. But one problem with this particular uh, design of this lens, and it's actually kind of subjective, maybe you guys might agree or not, but the focus ring. The focus ring is pretty good. I like how smooth it is because it allows me to manually focus on my subject really easily. But the problem is down the road, you'll definitely get a lot of dust particles in your lens. And I could definitely see a bunch of dust particles all around the edges of this lens. So when you do this particular design, you're definitely sucking uh, dust in and out, as you can see. Yes, this lens is as noisy as the limited um, lenses. So if you are shooting indoors, definitely you'll hear a lot of noise. But if you're shooting outdoors, you won't hear as much. And I feel like this lens is made for the outdoors. So definitely um, that doesn't really bother me if you're shooting outdoors. And the cool thing about this lens is this focus shift right here. So essentially there's a feature in this lens and basically it's a quick shift feature. So basically what you do is you focus on your subject and if you're not happy with the focus, you can definitely slowly manual focus on your subject. And that's great for macro photography. Also you get focus peaking on your LCD screen and the flipper screen. And so with that said, it's actually a great feature to have on these uh, old vintage lenses. Yeah, there's tons of bees around here right now. So it's a little scary, but it's okay. I think I'm not allergic to bees yet. So we should be good guys. I would say this particular lens is actually a bit faster than the 43 and the 77 limited edition lens. So this is actually a pretty nice autofocus on this lens. Oh man, there's a lot of bees around here. <laughs> there's tons of bees here, guys. Woo wee! So how's the autofocus on this lens? It's pretty good, actually. It actually attracted a dog left and right pretty good. The unfortunate part is with every single lens, not just this lens, every other lens out there in the other markets and whatnot, when the subject comes towards you, it does lose focus, but it's good enough to definitely track fast moving subject. It's not for sports. It's just good enough for general purpose shooting. So auto focus on this lens is pretty good. At 100 millimeter, the compression of the images is really nice. The book is really nice. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of this bee right here. Let me see if I can take a picture of it right here. So the details there are coming out from this lens is really nice. Um, you can see all the sharpness of this particular plant. And as I 
go up, you can see this insect right here, and you could definitely see all the little tiny spot pattern on these wings. And as, as I zoom out, you can see the compression at 100 millimeter. The nice bokeh in the background is really nice. And definitely, if you look at this particular insects, <laughs> it gets a little scary. But you can see all the scale of, on this insect, and definitely you can see the legs, and it has these spikes or fur. I'm not so sure what they are, but um, if you look even closer, this particular insect, you can see a little water drip that's on its um, horn or fur. But um, definitely, as you zoom out, the bokeh is really nice. So I really enjoy using this lens. And for the bee right here, the bee you can see all the little tiny furs. And as you look closer, you can see the little tiny white pattern on its head. And as you zoom out, you can see the excellent image quality that this lens produced. And I really, really enjoy the bokeh on this lens and definitely the sharpness in the middle. So you're definitely getting a really good value for this lens. And if you are looking even closer, you can see all the tiny little pattern of the wings of this particular bee. So definitely this lens is really made for macro photography and for this particular image right here I wasn't even trying but definitely the uh, lens did all the work I'll be quite honest I'm not a botanical type of guy but you can see all the little tiny details of this green um, plant right here um, looks like melons or something I don't know what they are <laughs> I apologize but um, you could definitely see all the little tiny fur on this plant and definitely if you look even closer you can see the little strands of hair on the edges of these uh, this flower so it's a really nice lens and um, if you take a look at this particular photo um, yes you can definitely see the tiny little hair strands and that's just so crazy to me and funny thing about this lens the more closer you look at your images doing macro photography the more that you notice that there is even more in your uh, image because I just noticed there's a little insect on your on this on this flower so definitely this lens will render a lot of detail and um, the bokeh in the background is really nice and pretty so most of you guys are probably wondering how's the image quality on this lens and to give you guys a quick summary the image quality on this lens is really sharp uh, I have no complaints about the sharpness of this lens It's really good the only complaint I may have for you guys and it's gonna break a lot of hearts the color aberration, color fringing on the lens. It is definitely on the lens. If you're doing portrait photography, this won't be on your skin, on the glasses. So if you're using this lens as a portrait lens, this is what you'll be getting. And so at f2.8, which is on the left, you'll be getting a bit of a softer image than f4 that's on the right. They both share chromatic aberration. As you can see, the little purple fringing on my glasses and my eyebrow. But the bokeh in the background is a little different. You could um, actually it looks quite similar. You can't really tell unless you compare them left and right, but they look quite similar. So you'll be getting a nice image if you're shooting f4 on this lens for sure. And I think the image quality on this lens, it's definitely there. You can see all the tiny little fur on my face, definitely a little tiny um, extra hair on my eyebrow, and um, you can see all the dust. On my eyeglasses and so look at 2.8 you don't see much of the dust on the eyeglass area so and uh, if I switch this to 5.6 versus a 5.8 this is what you'll be getting and of course you'll be losing a lot of the bokeh in the background once you jack up the aperture and still definitely you could see that just both of these images do have chromatic aberration is very slight. It is subtly disappearing, but it's still there for sure. And yes, this lens is really, really detailed. And as you can see, the chromatic aberration on my fingers right here. And let's turn up the aperture again to f11 and f16. So this is what it looks like at f11 and f16. So this is the type of image quality you'd be getting. And yes, at every single aperture above 2.8, the images is really sharp at center focus. If you're doing outdoors landscape, it's definitely going to be in your images with all the highlights, the rocks, the edges of the building where the sun is hitting. You'll definitely see the purple fringing. However, if you do jack up the aperture to f8, f11, or f16 around that ballpark, the purple fringing seems to disappear. But unfortunately, I end up seeing it somewhere in the photo. Not a big deal. You guys can definitely post-process that in Lightroom or Photoshop, but it's definitely in the lens. 
So if you're planning to do landscape photography with this lens, this is what result you'll be getting. And this is my typical landscape test that I always use. Um, as you can see at 2.8 is definitely soft on the left and f4 is definitely sharp on the right. And if you look down at the edge of this particular building, you can see that the purple fringing right here and you do see a slight purple fringing right here as well. And so if you look at the edges of this image, definitely the f4 is a bit sharper. And um, if you look at the right of this image, definitely the F4 is much more sharper. So that's something for you guys to know. And once you jack up your aperture up a bit, you slowly, slowly lose the um, CA. And if you look at 5.6 on the left, comparing to the right, you'll notice that it's the CA is slowly, slowly evaporating. So that's good news for those people that want to use this for landscape photography. Definitely this will not produce a lot of CA once you jack up the aperture. And if you look at uh, f11 versus f16, you can clearly see that the CA is quite gone. And so that's something for you guys to know. Um, if you take a look at f11 versus f4, just to show you guys how the CA is, is disappearing, definitely the purple on the left is the f4 and the one on the right is the f11 so definitely you don't see much of the purple fringing in this area so that's good news for all your landscape shooters out there um, CA do, do, do disappear right after you tune up your aperture so for you outdoor shooters out there this particular combination with the weather resistant lens and body will give you peace of mind and so if you're living in a wet climate and you're shooting outdoors a lot and it rains out the blue just like in seattle uh definitely this will repel a lot of the water and so as you can see if you put water on this particular lens there shouldn't be any issue with this particular setup so for you guys out there that are really afraid of water definitely the pentex will hold up see it's fine so I know you guys probably had a hard time watching me pour water on the lens and the camera. Don't worry, I actually had an issue where I fell into water with the Pentax K1 and weather resistant lens and six months later it's still working just fine. So just make sure that your lens is weather resistant and your body is weather resistant and you should be fine against water. So after testing out the lens and going through all the images, I found your bugs. This particular lens at 100 millimeter actually delivers great excellent image quality i really enjoy the images that are coming out from this lens however the chromatic aberration do get in the way but if you hire your aperture you'll lose that chromatic aberration but you'll also lose the bokeh but at the end of the day it'll be a sharp image regardless so if you guys are an outdoors type of person that do go outdoors and hiking you're you're afraid of the weather it might rain or it might snow this particular lens got your back it has weather resistant as you can see the water was fine nothing is wrong with the lens at the end of the day pentax k1 could definitely hold up to that abuse so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you like it and give it a thumbs up if you hate it right now it's about to rain in seattle and i'm glad everything's weather resistant <laughs> so i'm out of here take it easy see you guys in the next one peace